looks nice. You must have bad eyes. I'm just so glad to be home. Tired? A little. I missed you. I missed you, too. You're not going to leave me, are you? Not a chance. Uh, you know, this is the first time we've been apart since we've been married. I mean, overnight. Wasn't much fun, was it? Mm -hmm. What'd you do? Oh, got lonely. And you? They gave me a pill to make me sleep. I wish they would have given me one. What'd you do? Watch TV all night? Yeah. And drank warmed up coffee and tried to study and tried to clean out my drawers, tried to call Rodney. He wasn't in. Then I called the hospital a couple million times. And you know that Miss Choate knows every Red Sox score from 1895 on. <laughs> then I thought if I got tired, well, I'd go to sleep. So I went downstairs and did a couple of laps around the square until Sergeant Goddard came out of the police station and made me go home. He did? Yeah, it was kind of late. Well, what'd you have on? Pajamas. Nothing else? Well, sure, but I got kind of warm. <laughs> You're unbelievable. I really did miss you. I'm glad. Did you decide? Decide what? No. No, you didn't decide, or no, we can't have a baby? We did. You have to give me more time than a couple of seconds. Okay, three seconds. One, two, three. No. Did you love me more? Yeah, but you could die. I won't. You could. Please. Relax, remember what the doctor said. Not to worry about a thing. Just take it easy. I'll do all the washing and everything. Help you behave. Mine's not the reason why, Mr. Harrington. What's he doing out there? He's probably catching some raids. I do know he doesn't like to be kept waiting. Hello, Leslie. Glorious day, isn't it? What do you want? Look around you, Leslie. What do you see? The innocence of youth. New life burgeoning from every branch and bush. What more symbolic setting could we have for the commencement of our new relationship? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you should. You read my will. What kind of an accusation is that? No need to masquerade, Leslie. Betty told me how you blackmailed her into bringing you that document. I wouldn't have to resort to those kind of tactics unless you forced me to. <laughs> well, those are the only kind of tactics you understand, Leslie. Don't waste your breath denying it. The point is that you and I have reached a milestone. After nearly 30 years of battle royal, we finally arrived at a common goal. You want Rodney to inherit the estate. Yes, I do. Why don't you just leave that to him? Because he couldn't manage it. I could. Yes, Leslie, you could. I've never doubted your administrative ability, only your integrity. And how much do the conditions of that will say for your integrity? Naming Betty as beneficiary if she leaves Stephen and remarries Rodney? Your brain should be sent to the Smithsonian. Teams of scientists should pick at it. <laughs> You uh, object to the conditions of my will? I see no reason for them. Well, that isn't what I ask. That will is going to be your epitaph. It's going to give the world a true picture of Martin Payton. A man totally corrupt, without conscience or compassion. 
<laughs> Good try, Leslie. But I'm not at all interested in my image, particularly after I'm dead. The conditions of my will are firmly fixed. And if you die tomorrow? <laughs> that thought doesn't please you as much as it did three or four days ago, does it? I've given my, my dice into the hands of fate. If my number comes up before Rodney and Betty are brought together again, then my much coveted fortune will be irretrievably lost. Lost to you, gained by a dozen charities. You're mad. My fortune was made by a, a succession of gambles. Why not put it on the line again? All or nothing. What do you say, Leslie? Shall we join forces to keep that fortune in my family? Or shall we watch it raked off the table? What do you want me to do? Help me remake the marriage you destroyed. Why is it so important to you that Rodney be married to Betty? Because Betty is the kind of woman that Rodney needs to make him a whole man. But more important, she hates you, Leslie. You could never control Betty the way you could control Rodney. Very clever. <laughs> I thought so. What you name me is trustee until Betty's 30. That means I could have power of attorney for a number of years. If you're so determined to prevent me from coming into control of your estate, why do that? Well, that's a gamble I don't like. But I had to have reassurance that you'd help me now. You see, you have it all figured out, don't you? <laughs> of course. I've already begun to bring Rodney and Betty together again. The electricity still seems to be there. Neither of them would do anything to hurt their marriage. That's why I need you. So you want me to put the pressure on Stephen? Hit him broadside with the Blaine report. And when he sees that Betty has had a string of illicit relationships with unknown men, he'll make it unbearable for her to stay with him. Precisely. I want a guarantee. You have it in writing. You could change that writing. If they do get back together, you could remove my name as trustee. Yes, I could. But you'd help me all the same. Because it's your last chance to lay your hands on a fortune you thought you had in your hip pocket before you married my daughter. Well, I'd take you back to the mill, Leslie, but I'm sure you'd rather walk on such a beautiful day. How well you know me, Martin. <laughs> Indeed, I do. Well, Mark? Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. Well, I sincerely hope Jack Chandler didn't ask you to keep anything confidential, or vice versa. I hope a Mr. Jack Forrest never did either. Whether I go or whether I stay, I promise you one thing. I won't bother you anymore. You couldn't even go back to your farm and haul slop for the pigs. Now, how are you going to make them pay? <laughs> 